Shall we turn to the book of John, chapter 5, verse 24? I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, I will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Shall we worship the Lord? At this time, I'd like to welcome all of you here in Ghana, West Africa, and the four corners of the world. Wherever you find yourself today, you are welcome to worship with us. We are gathered here to worship God, our Creator, Lord, and Savior. On my behalf, as a chaplain of the Valley View University and the university administration, as well as the church members, you are welcome to join us in this virtual worship service. We invite you to be with us during this worship time as we praise the Lord, as we pray, and as we glorify his holy name. May the Lord bless us this day. For our opening hymn, we shall turn to the Seventh Adventist hymn, the number 21. And the church choir will be leading us as we sing Immortal, Invisible, God, Holy Wise. chosen to read the scriptures for this morning's service is Margaret Lily Dawona. 
who is currently serving at the Vice Chancellor's office. Our scripture reading is found in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Amen. <laughs> to listen to the profile of the man, the servant of God, whom he has chosen to speak to us today. As most of us know, is Christian Eugene Ekoto. He's a passionate pastor and an educator. He has taught at the secondary school level as well as the tertiary level. He loves critical thinking and loves team, teamwork. He loves music and on occasions he has conducted church choirs. He also loves sports. His favorite quote is, there is no limit to the usefulness of the one putting self aside, makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his heart, and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. 
This is C.G. White, the Southern Watchman, recorded in 1905. I'd like to give a brief summary of his life. Christian Eugene Ekoto was born in Yaoundé, Cameroon, on July 6, 1976. He had his primary and secondary education in Cameroon. And from August 2003 to May 2007, he was a student here at Valley View University. He currently holds a PhD in education. And Christian Eugene Ekoto is currently serving with his wife at the Adventist University in Haiti. He loves children's ministries. He loves evangelism. He loves working with young people. And he enjoys preaching. We pray that the Lord God will bless his ministry in a very special way as we listen to him this morning. May the Lord God bless us. And may the Lord God bless him. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 26th graduation of Valley View University. It is with a great joy and privilege that I welcome you to this virtual celebration of God's goodness in the lives of God's people. This day, we are celebrating consecration and baccalaureate together virtually. Let me begin by giving some disclaimer first. All the pictures that I use in this message have been duly referenced and ethically used. Secondly, we thank Hope Media and most specifically Hope Media Haiti from where I'm speaking for giving us their equipment so we can have this message recorded. I thank the Lord for this great privilege to speak on this solemn occasion. And it is my prayer that all of us will be blessed by this message. Let me begin by saying that I love VVU. I love Valley View University. I have fond memories of the four years I spent there as a student. Good memories and more difficult memories that shaped me and made me who I am today. There is nothing you can do or say that will alter my love for Valley View. I'm really proud every time I travel around the world to speak for various occasions. I'm really proud to be introduced as a Valley View alumnus. And I really praise God for that experience that shaped me and made me who I am today. Remember that Jesus... Christ is a man of destiny. And I expect followers of Jesus Christ to be men and women of destiny. This is a very important thought as we delve into the message entitled Game Changer. Game Changer. Let me first share with you what I think a game changer is. A game changer is a person, an event, or an idea that contributes to a profound and lasting change in the way things are done for better or for worse, locally, globally, or globally. Sometimes I use words that are not in the dictionary yet, but this one is already there, globally. It is possible that somebody listening to me now, just by the fact that he or she is graduating, is already a game changer in his or her family. You might be the first graduate of your family. You might be the first to 
take the course you took at Valley View in your family, that already makes you a game changer. So welcome to the game changing arena, to the game changing club. So a game changer contributes profoundly and lastingly in changing the way things are done. And COVID has brought that change in our lives in the world today. There is nowhere in the world that you cannot hear about the effects and the reality of COVID-19. In every sphere, in every walk of life, you have game changers. For example, before Michael Jordan, people used to play basketball. But when he came on the scene, he changed the way the game was played profoundly and lastingly. The same thing can be said of Bruce Lee in the martial arts or in soccer or football, if you please, of Johan Cruyff and Alex Ferguson. For me, these people changed the way the game was played. Uh, Cruyff was a player, a famous player, but Ferguson was not. It doesn't matter whether you are a good player or not, an A student or not, you can still change the way the game is, is done. And by so doing, if you dedicate yourself and apply the principles that we're going to share in this message, you can rest assured that you will be a game changer for, 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 for the glory of God. You know, we think of Messi and Ronaldo as game changers, and in their rank, they are. But let me tell you something. The people who put in place the system in which they function, I mean, Johan Cruyff and uh, Alex Ferguson, they are the real game changers. And in, in the area of science, you have um, uh, Albert Einstein. People used to do physics before Einstein, but when he came on the scene, he changed the way physics was done. The same with Dr. Stephen Hawkins. So we have people in every sphere, in, in, in technology, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, and close to us, Kwame Nkrumah and Philip Emiagwali. For those who don't know, Philip Emiagwali is a Nigerian born who changed the face of the world because he is known as a father of the internet. So you can be a game changer, and this is the way you do it. But first of all, let me say that Valley View is a game changer. There is a you before Valley View and a you after Valley View, believe me. And I can testify to the fact that Valley View is a game changer. To be part of this premier chartered university, private university in Ghana, is an amazing privilege. Yes, I know that you've had hard times. There is a lecturer, there is a staff, there is a fellow student who made you think that Valley View is not the best for you. But what they did that was wrong is not what Valley View stands for. So if ever somebody at Valley View makes you think otherwise, forgive that person and move on in life and make the best out of what you had at Valley View. For me, Valley View was a game changer. And as I told you earlier, I'm so proud everywhere I go when they introduce me as an alumnus of Valley View University. This class of 2020 chose as theme, empowered to confront global challenges through innovation, integrity, and selfless service. Your colors are white for purity, gold for authenticity, and royal blue for intelligence. Now, when I looked at your theme, there are a few things that stood out. First is the word challenge. Confront, empowered to confront global challenges. I'm glad that you understand that the world you are getting into is a very challenging world. And that you understand that you need some power. You need to be empowered in order to confront those challenges. And they are humongous, believe me. So you need power to face world challenges. But you want to do it with integrity and selfless service. And these are values. They are part of your belief system, your worldview. They form part of your character. So I understand that by your theme, you, you understand with me that you need 
power, I mean extra power, to, 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 to work through your values so you can confront global challenges. But let me tell you, I read something beyond your theme, and I understood that what you really want to talk about is change. You want to be empowered through your values to confront global challenges so you can effect change, so you can be a game changer. But let me remind you, friend, as you dream about this bright future that you have in mind, as you sit contemplating your future, remember that change is painful. Remember that change is scary. Remember that change is costly. Remember that change is messy. When you think about changing the world, think about something messy, something costly, something scary, something painful. It is not easy for yourself and for the people around you to effect change. And that's an important thing to remember as you focus on confronting global challenges after your graduation. Beyond change, what I realize is that we may be wanting to talk about progress. You know, change is not progress. Many times we change people, but there is no progress. We change ideas, but there is no progress. We change staff, but there is no progress. Not every change brings progress, and I mean positive progress. Look at some countries in the world. They change president after president. Corporations change president after president, CEO after CEO, but progress doesn't follow. So change does not automatically mean progress. But I think that's what you aim for, progress. You aim for progress through change. You know, progress is sweet, but change is painful. But you need to go through change in order to experience progress. You cannot have progress without change. Progress is impossible without change, says George Bernard Shaw. And those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Some of us, we set ourselves up thinking that we're going to change the whole world. But we forget that the first person, the first thing to change is ourselves, is our mind, is how we think. If you think that you're going to change the world without changing yourself first, then you're setting yourself up for disappointment and frustration and discouragement. The first thing that needs to change is my mind if I want to change the world and bring about progress. So the power that you need to empower you and your worldview and your value to confront global challenges, to effect change, is about bringing progress, something better, making the world a better place. That's what we call a game changer. But I hope you are not leaving your changing game to chance. Because it's possible that some of us may think that change just happens, that progress just happens. If you happen to think that way, that change is for some elite people, progress is reserved for some elite people, that it's a, like by chance or by accident, you watch out the statement. Ellen White said that true success in any line of work, any line of work, is not the result of chance or accident or destiny. It is the outworking of God's providences, the reward of faith and discretion, of virtue and perseverance. Fine mental qualities and a high moral tone are not the result of accident. And listen to this. She says, God gives opportunities. Success depends upon the use made of them. Value is an opportunity, 
And your success depends on the use you make of Valley View and all that you went through at Valley View for four years or more or less. So success, change, progress is therefore not by chance, not by accident, not by destiny, but by choice. To be a game changer is a choice. It's a choice that we make today. It's a choice that we make every day to become a game changer. We don't leave it to chance or accident or destiny. And uh, you remember at Golgotha, for those of you who love the word of God and the stories it tells, there is a time in the Gospels when Jesus is crucified, and most of the time we focus on Jesus. And that's legitimate because he is the focus of Calvary. But let me show you something that you might not have seen. You see, there were two people crucified besides Jesus, one on his left and one on his right. Two gangsters. And both of them started mocking Jesus. I mean, you have to understand that in the entire human history, there, these are the only two people who had the privilege of being crucified with Jesus. Abraham didn't have that privilege. Moses didn't have that privilege. Elijah didn't have that privilege. Paul didn't have that privilege. None of the great men of the word of God had that privilege of being crucified with Jesus. And you have to remember that th that was a unique opportunity to be crucified by the side of Jesus. An opportunity that no other person on earth had and will ever have. And these two thieves had two different reactions. One realized that this was the opportunity of his lifetime. And he said, remember me. And he chose, he chose to change the game of his life. And he asked Jesus to remember him, and Jesus remembered him. You know the other thief, what he did? Nowhere is it recorded that he requested anything from Jesus. And he might be lost for eternity. You see, these two thieves were, were just beside the opportunity of their life. God himself was with them. Some of us, even if God himself comes in front of us and speak to us face to face, we will still spit on his face. We will still mock him. We will still reject him. We will still not want to listen to him. So you see, your free will, you have the decision to be a game changer and to become a game changer to the glory of God. It doesn't matter whether God comes face to face. Some people wait to have, wait to have a, a, a dramatic experience of God. That doesn't matter. In the wilderness, he, Israel saw many miracles. The Red Sea was parted into two. They saw manna falling from heaven. They saw water gushing from the rock. But yet, many of us, majority of them, couldn't make it into the promised land. So, the, 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 the experience of God, the presence of God doesn't guarantee you that you'll be a game changer. You have to make that decision for yourself. You have to make that choice to become a game changer because you have to remember that the world that Satan is preparing for you, for your family, is an anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-spirit, anti-Bible, anti-faith, anti-church world. That's the world that the, wor the, the Satan is preparing you for. And that's a very challenging world. A world in which we need an extra power. And I'm glad you understand that the challenges that the 21st century is posing in front of you need an extra power. I mean a supernatural power that doesn't come from you. Game changers face global challenges by faith. You need to have that relationship with God. You need to have that personal, intimate, growing, fruitful relationship with God that grows from faith in Jesus Christ. That is what you need. The supernatural power, the Holy Spirit working in you, working through you, so that through your speech, through your demeanor, through everything that you do, who you are, you are recognized and acknowledged in your company, in your business, in your neighborhood, in your 
your churches wherever you go as a game changer for the world. So game changers face global challenges by faith. Game changers face global challenges through work, not any kind of work, hard work, but also smart work. So learn how to work hard. Learn how to work smart if you want to be a game changer for the Lord. Game changers face global challenges with res resilience. And by resilience, I mean recovering quickly from difficulties. Sometimes you will face challenges and you will fall and you will feel like being discouraged and ending the, 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 the journey. Remember that the righteous falls seven times, but seven times he rises on his feet. So move on, move on with resilience, persevere, continue, press on if you're on the right path. Game changers face global challenges with resilience. And since we are in the 21st century, I don't know if you heard about the 21st century skills. And this is important to understand because it seems that many of us have not yet understood that there are certain jobs that will vanish in the future. And many of us are opting for careers that are going to die. We need to be smart enough to choose what is going to help us function in the 21st century. We need an education that prepares us for the 21st century, not for the 19th century. And I believe that at Valley View, you have that kind of education. And let me tell you something. Among the 21st century skills, there are four C's. Number one is collaboration. Number two is communication. Number three is critical thinking. Number four is creativity. When it talk about creativity, then you talk about innovation. And because you talk about creativity, you have to understand that creativity is the confluence of critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. So if you are there thinking that you're going to be a game changer by yourself, you are disillusioned. You will be you are set up for disappointment. If you think that you're going to change the game without critical thinking, you are at loss. If you think that you are not going to communicate but change the world, you are highly mistaken. So you need to adopt and adapt critical thinking skills, collaboration skills, and communication skills. Work in teams so you are creative and you bring about innovation. You see, creativity is not innovation. Innovation is creativity brought to practice. Tangible creativity. So learn about the 21st century skills. Go online, go to school, upscale yourself, and make yourself ready for that century. If not, everything that you went through at Valley View will be lost forever. But remember, each one is unique. Y-O-U-N-I-Q-U-E. But nobody is perfect. You are unique. No one be like you, as they say. No one is like you. No one thinks exactly like you. No one looks like you. No one speaks like you. You have unique abilities. You have unique competencies. You have unique skills. You have unique gifts. You have to contribute. But remember, you are unique but not perfect, which means that you need others. You need to learn to collaborate, to cooperate in order to be able to be a game changer. So you need to learn about teamwork. There is no individualistic mindset among game changers. Game changers change things with others, for others, through others. So we have to be able to work in team. And at Valley View, Class of 2020, you've received an education that's complete. It is spiritual. It is physical. It is mental. It is social. And above all, it is Christ-centered. It is holistic and Christ-centered. I think you've heard it over and over again over the past four years, less or more. But remember, that's exactly what it means to be a game changer, Valley View's perspective. It means that spiritually you are there. It means that physically you are there. Aren't you the body, the temple of the Holy Spirit? It means that mentally you are there. It means that socially you are there. You don't lack anything because the power that is working in you, the power that you learned about at Valley View 
is shaping you and making you a game changer Christ's way. I hope that in a few years to come, a Valley View faculty will not meet you in your office and not recognize you. And go back to Valley View and say, you, you see, I, I met so, so, and so. He's now the minister of, he's now the CEO of, she's now the director of. And you don't know what that person became, that student of class 2020, that graduate of class 2020. You won't believe what I saw in his or her office. When she or he served me drinks, I saw certain drinks in the fridge that didn't look like what we gave her at Valley View University. When I heard her speak, the words that came out of her mouth didn't sound like Valley View University. I hope that every time any person from Valley View meets you in 10 years or 20 years, if the Lord hasn't returned yet, that person will go back to Valley View and say the people of class 2020 the graduates of class 2020 are living beyond our expectations and let me share with you that God doesn't want to meet our expectations he wants to exceed them if you don't believe ask Joshua he prayed for a, for a victory. God gave him this, a miracle of the sun that stood still. If you don't believe that God doesn't want to meet our expectation, but, do, but, but want, wants to exceed them, ask Anna. She prayed for a boy. She had children. If you still don't believe, ask King Hezekiah. He prayed for healing and God gave him 15 years. And a miracle in which the sun went backward 10 degrees. If you still don't believe, ask Abraham. He prayed for a son and God gave him nations. If you still don't believe, even go to Adam. He didn't ask anything and God gave him everything. So God doesn't want to meet your expectations. He wants to exceed them. So as you set out in the world today, uh, by after this graduation, have this in mind that God is willing to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you think or even ask, because he is almighty. He is the power behind your life, behind your projects, behind everything that you do. And when that is so, he will exceed your expectations and give you beyond what you hope for. So the power that works through your values and, and, and face those challenges that the world is giving you will affect change in you and change around you. And the change in you and the change around you will bring about progress, but that progress must be to the glory of God. Not every progress glorifies God. But at value, we taught you that we don't progress for progress sake. There is a purpose for our progress and that purpose is God, God's glory. So whatever your achievements will be tomorrow as you set out from Valley View and, and soar higher like an eagle, remember that God's glory is the ultimate reason for your progress and for your achievements. Never lose sight of God. Confronting global challenges through innovation, integrity, and selfless service requires an out-of-this-world game-changing mindset. It is something that cannot be done by ourselves. It is not manufactured. It is something that is out of this world. And let me ask you, where should the smart start? We are talking about changing the game. Where should the smart start? Do they start by a dream or with a problem? Sometimes we love talking about problems. But let me tell you, if you ask the question otherwise, where did God start? A dream or a problem? And when you look at how God started this world out, he started with a dream. And let me tell you, God's dream is very simple, but so deep and profound. God's dream is to spend eternity with humanity. Whatever he does, that's what he's aiming at. If you don't believe, remember creation. What did God create first? Man or the world? 
God behaved as a father and the mother who prepare a room before the baby is born. So he started with a dream. And his dream was to be one with man, spend eternity with humanity. So he created man. If you still don't believe, in Exodus 25, 8, the Bible says that God told Israel, you shall make me a sanctuary. Why? Because I want to dwell among you. That's God's dream. If you still don't believe, remember that the last time God paid us a visit, he chose to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. If you still don't believe, go to Revelation 21, 3. After everything is said and done, Jesus has come. The millennium is done. The new Jerusalem comes down from heaven and there is a proclamation. Here is the tabernacle of God. He's going to dwell with humanity for eternity. That's God's dream. So because God wants to remain with us, to stay with us, to spend eternity with you and I, he designed the plan of creation. Creation is a plan, but it's not a goal. But he anticipated a problem, and that problem was sin. And because of sin, God designed the plan of redemption. So God started with a dream, that's plan A, a creation, that's plan A. And then he had plan B, as you set out of Valley View. Be and have the mind of Jesus Christ, the mind of God. There is nothing better than having the mind of God. So have plan A, plan B, plan C, and why not plan Z? That's how God thinks. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. You see, I said earlier that it takes an out-of-this-world mindset to be a game-changer God's way. You can choose to be a game-changer your way. Many people do that. In fact, billions do that on earth. You can choose to be a game-changer your country's way your church's way, but you have the opportunity, the option to become a game changer God's way. And for you to become a game changer God's way, you need the mind of Christ. Actually, that's the best mind you can ever have. It's a mind that is creative like the mind of God. It's a mind that is loving. It's a mind that is merciful and you're going to need it. It's a mind that works in a team spirit. That's how God is. And, and when you read Isaiah 14, 13 to 14, I'm going to do what I call a dynamic reading. It says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High God. These are the thoughts that were found in the heart of Lucifer who turned out to become to be Satan. So this, this is a mindset that is available to you. And that's an I mindset. That's not what Valley View taught you. That's not what we teach you. That's not what the Word of God teaches you. What the Word of God teaches you about the mind of Christ is found in Philippians 2, 5 to 8. It says, Christ did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Christ made himself of no reputation. Christ took the form of a servant. Christ came in the likeness of men. Christ became obedient even to the death of the cross. That's the mindset that you need to be a game changer God's way. And you have the ego mindset and the God mindset. And remember the choice is yours as you set out of Valley View, as you think about your future, you are now deciding who is going to be the master of your life, yourself or God. But in the end, you will reap out the consequences of your choices today. So Jesus is the greatest game changer of all times. There is no one who can change the game your game, your family game, your future game, your country's game, your, your, your company's game. There is nobody that can change the game better than Jesus. So in Christ, God game changes universal history and individual stories for the best. And this is important for you to remember. And this is the message I had for you today. If you want to be a game changer, let Christ change the game of your life First, let him give you his mind. 
And I will end with this experience that I had with my mother. I come from Cameroon in Central Africa. And school is quite difficult in Cameroon. Sometimes, when you reach the A level, they call it baccalauréat in French, you've spent 10 months preparing for a national exam with several subjects, about 13. If you fail, the next year you go back and you, you start over again, over and over. I did it four times in five years. The year I finally passed, I rushed back home and I met my mother and I said, Mom, I made it. I was so excited. And I was thinking already about my future and my mother looked at me. She's very short, composed. She doesn't speak much with no emotions whatever. She looked straight at me and she asked, what next? You know, you can't talk back to your mom like that in Africa. You know? But I was telling myself, what do you mean? So I said, okay, I'm going to university. And then she said, what next? Well, I'll get a job. What next? I'll get married. What next? I'll buy a house or build a house, buy a car. What next? I'll work and travel around the world. What next? Then something began to sink within me. I said in a different tone, I'll retire. And she kept on, what next? And my face was going down and I said, I'll grow old. And she said, what next? I said, I'll die. And she said, what next? You see, that is one of the best gifts my mother gave to me that day. It shaped me and changed me and refocused me. And I understood that the most important thing that you can be in life is to be like Jesus, to be what God wants you to be. And that's what it means in this message to be a game changer. So remember the next factor as you set out away from Valley View, Every step along the way, ask yourself, what next? And if this message has touched you, I'm inviting you to bow your heads wherever you are so we can pray together to God so he can bless you and make you a game changer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this graduating class and we thank you for the message that you prepared for them. Thank you so much for reminding us that it's all about you, O oh Lord, and that as we move out of Valley View, we have to forgive all those that wronged us and move out with a clean heart, a clean sheet, and start afresh with you, knowing that you are our game changer and you want us to be game changers for your glory. So I pray that you send your special grace and anointing upon each graduate that in the years to come, if Jesus hasn't returned yet, we will look back together and celebrate, celebrate your goodness in their lives. I also pray that you forgive them everything that they did or said wrong at Valley View. And that you give them that power that you promised in your word that will power their values so that they can confront global challenges and bring about change and progress for your glory. So pave the way for them and lead them as they follow 
This is our humble prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray. Our Almighty God and Father in heaven, we worship you for being our God and our King, our beginning and end, our guide in the past, our sustainer today, and our hope for the future. Today, we rise and raise our grateful hearts in praises before you to honor and to acknowledge your sovereign majesty over us on the occasion of the Genesis Congregation of Valley View University. We adore you for your goodness, mercies, guidance, protection, and sustenance, and for prospering our work amidst the challenges of year 2020 um, academic program. We unite our hearts in acknowledgement of all your blessings for forgiving all our iniquities, healing all our diseases, for redeeming our lives from destruction and crowning our endeavors with your divine favor and tender mercies, for satisfying our mouths with good things and causing our youthfulness to be renewed like the eagles. Indeed, you have been good to all of us because your mercies forever endure. Hallelujah. Today, we thank you for the lives of the members of the graduating class and for the opportunity granted them to see the glorious, this glorious and important day. We thank you for, your, for the roles played by the parents, guardians, and loved ones. And I appreciate the support of administration, faculty, and staff, and all others who have brought them to the completion of their course of study. Indeed, we are grateful for your guidance, love, and favor that have blessed each one of them in this important work. May this class of 2020 after reaching this milestone, attract your special favor, especially as they chart new beginnings. May their lives, after this period of steady, uh, steady stay in Valley View University, impact the rest of their adult life 
with excellence, integrity, and service. Father, you know. You know how this graduating class had to complete their studies most uniquely in the history of Valley View University as a result of COVID-19. So grant them in fulfillment of the theme of this congregation to be empowered to confront global challenges through innovation, integrity, and selfless service. In the process, Father, enable them to remain true to the meaning of their colors, purity for color white, authenticity for color gold, and intelligence for color royal blue. Again, help them to use all that they have learned at Valley View to make the world a good place to live, and in the process, prepare all for the imminent, eternal, and better world to come. And with such holistic education, may they discover holiness in the midst of life challenges and blessings. Father, we know that some of them may experience pains and hardships, so we ask you to grant them solace, strength, and abiding health. We also know that they will be confronted with many challenges like finding jobs after national service, right marriage partners to establish peaceful homes, fulfilling their destinies, and all others. In all, May you be the God of help, of hope, and guidance while life lasts, till they reach the eternal home etern eventually. And now we pray to present them to you. And during this session of New Beginnings, you will make clear their way and remind them that you will be with them always. May they daily sense the freshness of your spirit over their lives in amazing ways and be strengthened with hope. Our world is currently anxious, fearful, and uncertain. We pray that our graduates will feel, are filled with the courage and strength that they may be examples and light to their friends and neighbors. For them, we ask for your wisdom and clear direction for their lives. For them, we ask that you will give them understanding beyond their years. For them, we ask that your plans for them will lead them to prosperity. Yes, for them, we pray that every place you have determined for them to walk will be paved clear, and that for, for them, doors will be opened, and others or other doors will be tightly shut that should be closed, and that every gift and treasure you have placed in them will be developed to flourish to your glory. Most importantly, we pray that you will surround them with friends and leaders who will challenge them to press closer to you, God. Grant them boldness and vision to face challenges set before them. A confidence and peace that can only come from your spirit. Father, raise up greatness in their lives, greatness in their generations, greatness in the work and areas of specialization, greatness in any community you plan them, and as they exhibit willingness to stand strong, true, and passionate to fulfill their destinies. Finally, may your Holy Spirit fill them and be lamps for their feet and light to their path, shining over them and blessing them. Father, we have asked all these by the grace of Christ, through the love of Christ, and in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. And now may the Lord bless and keep all of you. The Almighty God calls His face to shine on you and be gracious to you, the Lord, Turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Chancellor, Chair of Council, Vice Chancellor and Management, our inspiring preacher, distinguished guest. Worshippers at this special consecration service, I, Emmanuel Mante, on behalf of the 2020 graduating class, do hereby respond to these inspiring sermons as follows. We are poised to become agents of change. Indeed, very few has equipped us with what it is to change the game in our perspective field of professionalism as we transition into the corporate world. We have no doubt that God is with us and he will lead us into a great success as long as we can depend on him. We have gone through the education in Valley View University 
which for us is a special privilege and memorable experience because Viveview has imparted the values of excellence, integrity, service, which have become our hallmark. As indicated in the sermon, these values are the building blocks that will bring us to the sources we have desired. We promise that we shall live by these values and we shall, by the grace of God Almighty, become game changers. Pastor Dr. Ekoto, on behalf of all the graduates of 2020, we assure you that we will uphold the values and the principle of value view and promise to be wealthy ambassadors. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of my colleagues. With the message still ringing in our hearts, shall we turn to our last team, taken from the SDH 193, Savior, teach me, Savior, teach me. benediction. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you are and wherever you go. Amen.